Welcome to what would have been our first outdoor worship service here at Liberty. As the bell rings to call us to worship, we invite you to take this moment to quiet yourself, to center yourself, to open yourself up to God's presence with you wherever you are worshiping. Psalm 95 calls us to worship, saying, The Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth, and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands form the dry land. Come, let us bow down in worship. And so, friends, we come with joy, because our God is a gracious Father to us, because he's given himself to us in his Son, Jesus Christ. And because God is present with us right here and right now. So come and let's worship God.
Continue our worship with a time of prayer. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, you are our refuge and our refu resting place. You are our protection and our peace. You are the sure and unshakable foundation on which we can build our lives. Because of who you are and what you have done for us and your son, Jesus Christ, we no longer need to live in fear. Instead, we can live a life full of joy and praise as we live in the light of your grace and love. And so as we worship you this morning, speak to those parts of our lives where we struggle to believe, where we thirst for your presence, flood our lives with your spirit, where we long to see you and to be seen by you, make your presence known where we need your power to bring healing to our lives and to our world, pour out your love and grace so that the world might see your glory. We pray these things in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray together like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This morning, for Children's Moment, I wanted to talk a little bit about prayer. Now, we just recited the Lord's Prayer, which is the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. And it's good for us, but sometimes I want to pray a little bit more specifically. And a long time ago, someone taught me this, the Acts Prayer Guide. So I thought it'd be a great idea for us to learn the Acts Prayer Guide together. A is adoration, C, confession, T, thanksgiving, and S, supplication. So let's go through this together. Adoration, it's our heart, and it says, God, I love you because... Now, in the Lord's Prayer, we just heard, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Jesus is giving God all the praise and glory, and we too can do that. I usually start my prayers saying, Oh God, you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. How much I love you. When we're finished adoring our Father in heaven, we can go to confession. That is when we ask God to forgive us. I'm sorry. For me, I have to say, God, I'm sorry when I became selfish. And I wasn't thinking about you, I was thinking about me. So it's a great time for us to say, maybe, please God forgive me for not being nice to my brother or my sister or not sharing. Any of those ways are great for us to remember confession and our prayer. Jesus said, forgive us our sins. 
and let us forgive those who sinned against us. That was part of the Lord's Prayer. Thanksgiving is the next one. Oh my goodness, there's so many things we can say to thank God for everything he's given us. We can thank him for the warm weather, the sunshine, our homes, our families, even this church, and most importantly, our son, Jesus, his son, our Lord and Savior. And finally, supplication. That is just a fancy word for saying, supply our needs, not our wants, boys and girls, our needs. And that means we can say things like, please, God, help me to be more like you. Help me to share the love of Jesus with others. So let's try that. I'm going to do the Acts prayer as we close. Heavenly Father, oh, how I love you. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Please forgive us all when we have chosen our own selfish ways instead of wanting us to do what you want us to do. And Lord, I thank you that you've given us Jesus as your Lord, our Lord and Savior. And finally, Lord, help us to love one another as you have loved us and to love our neighbor as ourselves. It's in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Well, again, welcome. We're so glad that you're joining us for online worship here at Liberty. Uh, we miss seeing you in the barn. Uh, we, we can't wait until we get to see you again, but we are so glad that you are using our online resources to continue to grow in your faith and to connect with this fantastic church. Just a few announcements for you. We want to say that there are lots of online resources that you can use to stay connected to this church, and the best way to find those is on our website, www.LibertyBarnChurch.com. You can find our online worship. You can find a page that has daily inspiration. You can find resources to continue to grow in your faith. You can find a children's corner that has all sorts of faith-filled activities for kids. We have a new Bible study that is started last week and is continuing for the next few weeks, led by Pastor John, on the parables of Jesus. He'll be walking you through how to understand these most famous teachings of Jesus and helping you to identify what lessons you might be able to learn from these. We invite you to check those out. Those videos are launched on Tuesday, but you can access those videos anytime you want and follow along with us. We hope you will. We also want to let you know that as we begin this process of reopening our building, the first step for that, for us, is to begin with times of an open sanctuary for prayer. This will begin on Monday, June 15th, and we'll have four times throughout the week where you can come and you can just simply be in our beautiful sanctuary, enjoy the presence of God, and pray. There won't be a formal program, but a pastor will be here. If you do need prayer, it'd be our privilege to pray with you. We do ask that you sign up for these times using Sign Up Genius, or please contact the church office at info at libertybarnchurch.com to, to tell us that you're going to be coming. And that just helps us to plan the space and make sure that we can keep everything safe and clean so that you can be protected while you're here enjoying this space. The times for this will be on Monday, June 15th, from noon to 1, and then from 4 to 5 in the afternoon, and then again on Thursday, again from 12 to 1, and then from 7 to 8 in the evening. And we invite you to come and to be a part of that. And then finally, the hearts have been on a staycation, but they will be back in the office tomorrow. So if you need to reach out to them, they'll be back in the office tomorrow. Now, let's continue our worship with a time of special music. And have the gift 
to all inspire and have not loved my words of faith are sounding glass and hopeless gain though I may And striving so, my love profess but not be given by love within the prophet soon turn strangely thin. Spirit come, our hearts control, our spirits long to be made whole, let inward love guide every deed. We worship and we are freed by this we worship and we are Hear these words from the prophet Isaiah. It was in the year King Uzziah died that I saw the Lord. He was sitting on a lofty throne, and the train of his robe filled his temple. Attending him were mighty seraphim, each having six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. They were calling out to each other, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of heaven's armies. The whole earth is filled with his glory. Their voices shook the temple to its foundations, and the entire building was filled with smoke. Then I said, It's all over. I am doomed, for I am a sinful man. I have filthy lips, and I live among a people with filthy lips. Yet I have seen the King, the Lord of heaven's armies. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a burning coal he had taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. He touched my lips with it and said, See, this coal has touched your lips. Now your guilt is removed, and your sins are forgiven. Then I heard the Lord asking, Whom should I send as a messenger to this people? Who will go for us? I said, Here I am. Send me.
As we come to this time of prayer, hear these words from Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. Let's pray. Gracious God, we are grateful that you are our refuge and strength. You provide a place where we can go when we don't know where else to go. We come to you this morning with sad hearts, troubled hearts, and questioning hearts. We are overwhelmed with the reality of dangerous viruses and racial divides. It is hard not to become discouraged, so we come seeking your help. We come to you because you are our Heavenly Father and you love us as your children. We ask for forgiveness when we act as if we don't need you. Lord, we confess to you that we need you today. We pray for healing for our country. We pray for our brothers and sisters in other countries who too are experiencing illness, homelessness, and living in war-torn lands. We pray for our leaders and for our first responders. We come to you because you are a merciful God. We bring to you those sins that we need to confess. Give us strength to deal with the challenges that come our way. Those challenges are our own doing and those that are beyond our control. Open our eyes and hearts to ways that we can make a difference. May we be inspired to share your love with others. We come to you because you are the great physician, providing healing and comfort. We ask that those on our prayer list will feel your presence, surrounding them, providing for what they need. We pray for Phyllis, for Ian, for Betty, for Jean, for Sid, for Steve, the Campagna family, the Tetz family, John Simpson, Tom, John, Tim and David, Katie and Scott. We also pray for those individuals that are on our own hearts today. You are a loving God in whom we draw our strength. Help us to step out in faith and continue the good work that you have for us to do. In the name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. We invite those of you who are worshiping with us from home to continue to support Liberty with your offerings through the mail, by text, or online in the confidence that our God is faithful and remembering the words from the Apostle Paul. Since you excel in so many ways in your faith, your gifted speakers, your knowledge, your enthusiasm, and your love for us, I want you to excel also in this gracious act of giving. May God bless each gift. Let's continue to worship now through the gift of special music.
Well, today was supposed to be the first outdoor worship service here at Liberty, and that means that it is officially summertime. Well, summertime is always linked to the beach in my mind. Every year, my family would rent a house down on Cape Hatteras. Cape Hatteras is located at the southern end of the Outer Banks of North Carolina. And Cape Hatteras is famous for lots of things. You probably know its lighthouse with its spiral black stripe going up. Uh, it's famous for its beaches. But what really sets Hatteras apart is that it is a destination that is world famous for deep sea fishing. The Gulf Stream, which runs from the tip of Florida through the Atlantic, runs just a few miles offshore from Cape Hatteras. And that means that Hatteras is a destination for people who want to fish for things like tarpon and wahoo and marlin and sailfish and swordfish and tuna. Well, I always wanted to go deep sea fishing, but it never really worked out and for a lot of reasons. One is, is that it ain't cheap. You have to charter a boat and then you have to hire a crew in order to take you out. And the second thing is you have to wake up really early. I mean really early and for a host of reasons. That wasn't something that my family was interested in doing on our vacation. So instead, what we would do is we would go to the marina and we would watch as the boats came in and showed off their catch. And the boats were always full of fish. And if you were lucky, you would find the buyer for the local restaurant negotiating a sale. And if we found her there, we knew where we were eating dinner that night. Well, in our story for this morning, we're following along as Jesus and Simon Peter head out on a kind of deep sea fishing trip. But they come back with more than just a boatload of fish because Simon comes back with a new calling for his life. Let's listen now to God's word from the Gospel of Luke chapter 5. One day as Jesus was preaching on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, great crowds pressed in on him and to listen to the word of God. He noticed two empty boats at the water's edge, for the fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. Stepping into one of the boats, Jesus asked Simon, its owner, to push it out into the water. So he sat in the boat and taught the crowds from there. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, now go out where it's deeper and let down your nets for, to catch some fish. Master Simon replied, we worked hard all last night and we didn't catch a thing, but if you say so, I'll let down the nets again. And this time their nets were so full of fish they began to tear. A shout for help brought their partners in the other boat and soon the, both boats were filled with fish and they were on the verge of sinking. When Simon Peter realized what had happened, he fell to his knees before Jesus and said, Oh Lord, please leave me. I'm such a sinful man. For he was awestruck by the number of fish they had caught, as were the others with him. His partners, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, were also amazed. Jesus replied to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you'll be fishing for people. And as soon as they landed, they left everything and followed Jesus. Well, this morning we're beginning a new sermon series that we're calling Good News Encounters with Jesus. And over the next weeks, we'll be exploring stories from the Gospels as people come face to face with the good news that in Jesus, God's kingdom has finally come near. A kingdom where love and mercy are available in abundance and justice and grace rule the day. Well, we'll be looking at the ways that people's lives and the world around them are transformed by this good news. And we're going to be trying to understand what is involved in a genuine, authentic encounter with Jesus so that we might be able to have good news encounters with Jesus in our own lives too. So this morning we turn to this story of the calling of Simon Peter, James, and John and this takes place near the beginning of Jesus' public ministry. It was just a chapter before in the Gospel of Luke that Jesus began his ministry by preaching about the good news of the arrival of God's kingdom in him. 
And Jesus has been making this news concrete by healing lots of people of all kinds of diseases. And all of this preaching and teaching had begun to attract a crowd. So one day, as Jesus is preaching near a large lake called the Sea of Galilee, There were so many people who were so desperate just to hear one word of what Jesus was saying that they began to push in on him. And so Jesus sees a local fisherman, Simon, who would later be known as Peter, with an empty boat, cleaning his nets from the night before. Well, to avoid working under the hot Middle Eastern sun, A fisherman would work all during the night, and then at dawn, they would come back to shore with their boats, hopefully full of fish. So if Simon has an empty boat, that means that the night before did not go well for him. An empty boat means that he had just finished a night of backbreaking work, and he had absolutely nothing to show for it. And I imagine that all Simon wanted to do was finish his chores and just go home and explain the bad news that there wasn't going to be a payday today and then get some rest so that he could do it all over again the next evening. But Jesus sees Simon and asks if he can borrow his boat. And this isn't the first time that Jesus and Simon have crossed paths either. It was just a few verses before this story that Jesus had been in Simon's home and Jesus had cured his mother-in-law of a serious disease. So even though I am sure it was the last thing that Simon wanted to do, for whatever reason, Simon agrees and takes Jesus out into the lake so that the crowd can hear him as he preaches and teaches. And then when he's done... Jesus tells Simon to head out into the deep water and put out his nets for a catch. And Simon responds the way that any fisherman would. That's not my spot. That's not the place where the fish bite. We tried this last night and it didn't work. We didn't catch any fish there. And you can can sense that people Simon just knows that this isn't going to work because this isn't the way that things are done. Nobody has ever done it this way before. It's not practical. It's too hot. The fish aren't biting. They have to get ready for the next day. And just who does this itinerant Bible preacher think he is? And what does he know about fishing anyway? Simon's the professional. Putting out the nets seems crazy, but because it's Jesus, Simon agrees and he lets down the nets. And to Simon's surprise, he catches enough fish to break his nets and to nearly sink two boats. And just think about that for a second, because that is an absolutely ridiculous amount of fish. It's probably more fish than Simon could expect to catch in a year maybe even to catch in a lifetime. And can we be honest for just a minute? How many times have we held Jesus off at arm's length because following him just isn't practical? How many times have we said that all the things that God is calling us to do Seeking God's kingdom above everything else. Thirsting after God's justice and his righteousness. Loving our neighbor the way that we love ourselves. Forgiving our enemies. All the things that God is calling us to do are never going to work. Because it's just not the way that things are done. Jesus, I'd follow you and do all the things that you're calling me to do, but it's just not practical. How many times have we insisted on living our lives the only way, the best way, our way, 
And yet, how often is it the case that all we have to show for it are empty boats and some broken nets? So I wonder, what, what might it look like for you to have a real encounter with Jesus and to head out into the deep water to, in the words of one commentator, to go deep sea fishing with Jesus, to trust and to follow him outside of our comfort zones, to let go of our certainties, to have our lives radically reoriented. What might happen if we had a real encounter with Jesus and we had our eyes opened to the fact that in Jesus we come face to face with infinitely more power than we could possibly imagine? Because that's what happens to Simon. When he sees Jesus' power on display, power that is able to produce abundance where previously there was nothing, able to produce life where previously there was nothing, Simon realizes that he is in the presence of more than just an itinerant preacher with good fishing instincts. He knows that he is now in the presence of God himself. And not only that, he now realizes that Jesus is calling him to something more, something that is actually noble enough to fill his life with meaning and purpose. Jesus is calling Simon to drop everything and follow him and join him in the work of his kingdom. Jesus is calling Simon to fish for people, to reel people in from the depths of oppression and shame and brokenness and sin and to catch people in the net of God's love and mercy and grace. And Simon says that he is not up to the task. Simon tells Jesus that he's full of sin unworthy of the honor of being Jesus' disciple, even more unqualified to fish for people than he is to fish for fish. He's not ready. The power and the glory and the majesty of God is on full display in the uncontainable abundance and grace of God, and Jesus is inviting Simon to have his life fueled by that grace and to invite others to know that kind of love. And Simon says that he is hopelessly unqualified for the job. If he could just have a little bit of time, maybe he could get his act together. Maybe he could begin to shape up. And maybe you can relate to where Simon's coming from. Perhaps you're saying to yourself, there's no way God could possibly use me to achieve his purposes in this world. I'm not ready I'm not worthy. I'm not qualified. There's no way God could use me. Once I know the right thing to say, then, then I'll be ready. Once I've cleaned my life up, then God could use me. Once I've eliminated all the doubts and the fears that I have, then I'll be able to show the world the joy of following Jesus. Once I've dealt with all my other responsibilities, then I can join Jesus for some deep sea fishing, doing God's work, catching people the same way God's love caught me. But I'm not ready yet. And you know what Jesus says to that? Jesus says we don't have that kind of time. We don't have that kind of time. Don't be afraid. I don't call the qualified. I qualify the called. The need for the good news about me is too great. There are people out there who are waiting to be brought into this kingdom of justice and grace and mercy and love. And they're waiting right now. And they need it right now. And we don't have time to wait. 
They need to hear good news right now. And we don't have time to wait until you think you're ready. You're perfect for the job because I will be at work through you. Don't be afraid. See, that's what makes this a good news encounter with Jesus. It isn't up to us to have everything figured out. God's work in this world is not dependent on our power or our ability or even our notions of what makes us qualified. Instead, Jesus asks us to trust that he is at work in us and through us, just as we are, broken as we may be, even right now, to catch the world in the nets of his grace. Friends, let's pray. Gracious God, too often our boats are empty and you come and you tell us to put down our nets and we don't believe that your grace might actually be at work. We don't believe that you're powerful enough to fill our lives with your love and your mercy. We believe that your grace might be good enough for everyone else, but we don't believe that it might be good enough for us. And so we hold back and we don't join you in your work. Lord, help us to believe that no matter how we find ourselves, you can use us. You're calling us. You need us. The world needs us to do your work as you work through us. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, thank you so much for joining us for our online worship. We're so glad that you were able to connect. I want to thank Steve Banks for putting all of this together, for our fantastic musicians and the way that they lead us in worship, for our parish visitor, the Reverend Vicki Doyle, and for our director of children's ministry, Don Parr. And we also want to thank Elder Christopher Steele for being our bell ringer today. And now, as the bell rings to send us back out into the world as Christ's followers, Take a final moment to consider, what has God said to you this morning? And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the presence of the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always.
go in God's peace.